Sometimes it's really awesome coming from a big family because you have a lot of help when you need it. Hey, in this video, we'll show you how we framed out the garage. And if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, and comment. After the concrete is cured, the first thing you have to do is bolt down your sill plates to those anchor bolts. Now these are two by six pressure treated and they're pressure treated because code requires it. However, I put down that layer of grace, ice and water beforehand as a capillary break and as something to join the air boundary to. And I really think that's gonna protect the sill plates from rotting out. Uh, if the code didn't require it, I would have just used kiln dried lumber here. Now we framed up the garage walls and they are framed using two by six kiln dried lumber, 24 inches on center. They have a single bottom plate and a double top plate. The sheathing is actually sold as a subfloor material. It's three quarter inch OSB with tongue and groove. Now that's super thick for an exterior sheathing, I know, but I spaced the studs 24 inches on center and having that tongue and groove and the thickness really locked everything together and these walls are solid. I really liked this detail. I think these walls are more solid than the walls of my house and those I framed 16 inches on center. So although these panels are heavy, they're actually pretty cheap. Buying this three quarter inch tongue and groove material was slightly cheaper than me buying half inch CDX plywood. So you're getting a, a thicker, heavier, stronger product for the same price or just under. In my situation, just under. So give it a shot. But I left it proud by half an inch. Now what we did, Elena there is holding up the uh, couple of strips. So we just took the OSB and we ripped it to six and a half inches because the top plate is five and a half. We're butting it up to the wall. And as you can see, it's standing a little bit proud of the wall. That way the trusses are gonna rest on the OSB, not the wall. And then that creates a little overhang. Now, when this is all done, we'll nail on OSB to the entire underside of those trusses. And then this joint right here can be taped, creating a continuous air boundary on the inside. All right, we got quite a bit going on. We got John over there nailing the seams. Elena's getting ready a, a push stick thing that we can use. Um, we got two people uh, taping off the top edge. So we're making that air boundary connection before we put the trusses on. So that's Bill shimmying along the top plate, taping that joint. Wow, these trusses are heavy. I am so glad that I had the family come out. Thank you everybody who helped me uh, get these up. Uh, these are definitely the limit that I would ever attempt to lift by hand. Uh, anything bigger than these trusses, you'll, you're gonna need a crane. Uh, I don't know how guys do it. If, if you have lifted bigger trusses than these, uh, let us know in the comments below. Uh, but they, they took everything we had and it took us two days to set them all in place and have them completely secured. Cutting the tops of these uh, all thread off. Right there, that makes them flush so that we can put the cap on. And so this is an example of the cap. So now the cap can go on like this. They're fur. And what we went and did was uh, cut all the ends so that we're exposing the end grain nicely. And we've been brushing them off. And we also went and did an eighth inch round over on the edges. And now we are gonna go through and put on some linseed oil, boiled linseed oil. Here we are wiping it on. So these four posts are eight feet tall and they're uh, six by sixes. They support this beam going across the tops of the posts. The beam is made up of three LVLs, seven and a half inches tall. 
Uh, and surprisingly, I was able to get the LVLs delivered in their full length. They're, they're not even broken. So it's a continuous beam all the way. They then support uh, two by eights, which are the rafters. Uh, and I just bird mouth uh, cut those to sit on top of the beam. And they are directly in plane with the rafters. Uh, and there's a block to support them underneath. To create a deep overhang on the gable ends, I used what's called ladder blocking. This sits on top of the gable end trusses, which are a little bit shorter than all the other ones. So these two by fours span from the second truss, and then they go all the way out by two feet. They're spaced two foot on center, and they have blocking in between with some gusset plates uh, to keep everything solid. Uh, then you, I put the subfascia on all the way around, and this thing is now going to be a solid, strong overhang. The overhang matches all the way around, two feet. Uh, I love deep overhangs, keeps the weather off the doors and windows. The roof sheathing is the same material I use for the wall sheathing. It is sold as a subfloor material. It's three quarter inch tongue and groove OSB. Uh, that tongue and groove really helps everything lock together. Uh, and again, I did this because of that two foot on center uh, for the truss spacing and the real heavy snow loads in our area. I really liked this detail. You can see the uh, sheathing nearing completion, the nice porch that we're going to have, and on the south side, there's even some temporary staging that I had up uh, to help with the process. This was a great project, and thank you everybody who helped us out.